Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Friday here on this show, and we've got a lot of news to talk about here today. But no massive, shocking, big breaking news today. And so that means today's going to be a good chance to uh, get some feedback from you. We're still here, lovely Hawaiian Islands. Last Observer Live from here. Monday, we'll be back home in the studio. And so no calls here today. I'm going to take your text messages. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter, if you would like to uh, send a tweet. And, of course, at 4 Online on Cameo. Flooded this morning with Cameos, my Lord in heaven. But I'll get to them later on today. But in the meantime, we've got a lot of news, including uh, Tony Khan's big announcement that he has been teasing of late. He is now stating it could be revealed as early as this Wednesday's Dynamite. We'll tell you about that. It is a big, in, in fact, something massive is the way that he described it, of similar importance to the first dance when CM Punk returned to wrestling after a seven-year absence. We also have the main events of WrestleMania Night 1 and Night 2. WrestleMania is about 55,000 tickets each night, which in fact is uh, exactly where I said they were going to top off. They don't want to top off at 55,000 both nights. And so they've announced the main event of night one and night two. So I guess if you're one of those people that you ain't going to both nights of WrestleMania live, that would be me. Uh, you can pick and choose now which, uh, which main event you want to see. So we'll tell you about both of those. We've got updates on Cesaro, the AW ratings, SmackDown tonight. You'll never guess what SmackDown is advertising tonight. I'll give you a whole commercial break to think about it. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Hello, all of our top-tier YouTube subscribers, most of you, not all of you, and of course, all of our Twitch homies as well. We've got a lot to get into today. Sports Byline USA. We're going to do some news, and then we're going to take some, uh, some feedback here today, because we've got plenty of time for feedback, because no big shocking news today. At least I don't think so, looking at everything that's going on. But we do have some news to get into. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. F4W Online on Cameo. Mm. And away How much go. is that? It's uh, 35 bucks. I'm trying to pay well, off worth this it, uh, trip. Yeah, no. Hey, it's listen, it's worth 35 bucks. I look, I'm, I'm not making fun of you. I'm that. serious. People have already no, tagging me on tweets set, telling me and showing me the cameo saying, "Look at this nice thing that Brian said for my 14-year-old for his birthday or look at what how well Brian buried Reddit or whatever it would happen to be. They've all been very well done and doing these on your vacation. You should be uh, saluted for that. So salute. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. No one's asked me to do a cameo for you yet. That's the weird thing. I've already been asked to do a cameo for Oreo the Orca. <laughs> Boy, did have I have you? fun with that one. That big, fat whale. <laughs> hey, w is Tony extra? Khan. I should have. Said that the big announcement he has been teasing as of late could be revealed as soon as next Wednesday. Appearing on Busted Open Radio on Friday, Khan said he believes he'll be in a position to announce the news next Wednesday on Dynamite. He also noted the announcement is not just about one particular piece of talent, but rather something that will impact the entire industry. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to tell everyone you definitely will not want to miss Wednesday Night Dynamite next week, he said. <laughs> I have a huge announcement coming, and nobody knows what it is. It is going to be something very important in the wrestling business. It's not just one particular piece of talent. It is something very special. I'm really excited about it. I believe it is something we will be in a position to announce on Wednesday. Last uh, Wednesday before Dynamite, speaking to Tony Schiavone, Khan said he was working on, quote, something massive that was of similar importance to the first dance when CM Punk returned to wrestling after a seven-year absence. I promise you something big is coming. It's not like the first dance where I could put a date, time, and place on it and say, no, I know exactly when, but... It is like the first dance that I know something big and important is coming to AEW. 
coming to AEW. Hmm. And I am very excited about it. What could this be? And is it true nobody knows except Tony Khan? Hmm. Interesting. Well, it's impossible for no one to know besides Tony Khan because then, then who would he be negotiating with? Somebody else has got to know, right? Or are, is everybody negotiating with Tony Khan blind? Do they not know that they are going to be the big surprise that he is talking about? I don't know. But, you know, it's funny because uh, Tony Khan is advertising a big announcement here. And uh, a few weeks ago, there was the announcement that a uh, new talent was going to debut on Dynamite in a face of the Revolution ladder match qualifier. And uh, it was Keith Lee. And uh, if you guys recall correctly, uh, that show did a good number. And, uh, you know, it was pointed out that if you, if you announce something big, the show's going to do a big number. And then last week, uh, we had a uh, pretty big show and uh, didn't do all that well. Did 850000 or something like that, if I recall correctly. And uh, you know what happens when AEW has a low week? What's that? Everyone says the sky is falling. Uh. And they talk about everything that was wrong with the show and all of the matches that people didn't want to see and all this and that. And uh, in, invariably, the next week, everything's back to normal because that's what happens with these AEW ratings, I've noticed. And uh, you'll never believe what happened this week. Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, 1.010 million viewers, up 16.2% from last week. Tied Dynamite's debut as the show's fourth highest viewership in 2022. 18 to 49, a 0. .40, up 29% from last week. Ratings up across all demos. Biggest increase in 12 to 34. Males up 58.8%. Females up 56.6%. Compared to last year, it was up 21.5% in total viewers and 14.3% in the key demo. What was it, everybody? Uh, the Jericho segment, the demo god? Was it uh, this battle royal? Was it the lead in? Anyway, the point of this is, listen, I'm all about studying the ratings, okay? I've been doing it for like 25 years now, and uh, they are, are obsessive about studying the ratings as well. But uh, sometimes things are just going to go up, and sometimes they're going to go down. And it's not like the end of the world, and it's not like the greatest thing that ever happened either. It's just there are going to be patterns. There's going to be other stuff on television. Sometimes people are going to watch what else is on television. Most of those people are probably going to DVR the show. I mean, I, I, uh, I think, and this is actually less so with, uh, with other programs, because... Uh, you know, Raw and SmackDown are are uh, are pretty stable, but uh, you know, there's there's less stability I've noticed with Dynamite. Like some weeks it's going to do 1.1 million viewers, some weeks it's going to do 850 thousand viewers, and like nobody is being driven off on those low weeks. It's just I don't know what it is. Something happened, whether it's the NBA or everybody wanted to watch South Park or we go to war, or whatever. And quite frankly, we went to war this week and they still did 1.01 million. So. I think that uh, we should study them. We should look at them. We should try to look for patterns. But the point is, don't freak out over a week. This this happens with... Actually, the pattern is now that every few weeks there's going to be a low number and then it's going to go back to normal afterwards. That's the pattern now. I don't know why. But anyway, that's my that's my take on these numbers. For most people who it's not their business, like, you know, Brandon Thurston and Dave Meltzer and people like that, I mean... Yeah, Dave incorporates it into his talking about the news because that's what he's been doing for years. And obviously, he reports the news. He, he discusses that. So I get why it's a big deal. A lot of fans, though, I mean, it's turned into the NBA dunk contest. Like years ago, when this was new and WCW and WWF were battling head to head, it was, you know, it was awesome in a lot of ways. It was new. It was fresh. They were going head to head. There were these, you know, it was the, the biggest amount of people watching wrestling at one time that we had had in, you know, since the 80s. I mean, it was insane. It was more popular than ever mainstream. Things had dripped into the mainstream, whereas now, 
like you watch the NBA dunk competition, this last one passed. It was like it sucked. You couldn't wait to get it over fast enough. And it's like for most of the time talking about ratings, that's what it's like. I mean, yeah, there's a reason it exists, but it, people aren't really comparing them to how they should. AEW is competing with itself. WWE is competing with itself to banter these numbers back and forth and to try to dunk on each other. It's like they're all usually bricks every single time, you know, no matter how dazzling your tweet is going to be with the blindfold on in the 360, you've still missed because it, it really doesn't matter. It's is AEW making Turner happy right now? Yes, they've been very happy with him. Same thing goes with WWE and USA at the end of the day when we talk about this stuff. It's a wash. USA desperately needs WWE. How we should be talking about ratings in the grand scheme of things is not is boring, frankly, because it's talking about how they will maybe impact things later on. And you start to break down those numbers. It becomes a little less fun. And that's why Brandon Thurston's a guy who loves that stuff. So that's why he covers them. But it's a tired discussion a lot of the time, unfortunately. And it fills well, time. People like to banter it back and forth, but I don't think people debate it and use it correctly. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just want well, to use it to dunk on the other dude. And it's like, it, you can do it, but it sucks. We we got a new guy here who, uh, he's new, so I'm not going to yell at him. But he wanted to know if I if I ever talked about ratings before NXT and NAEW went head to head. Yes, brother. Since 1995. Okay. I'm going to say one quick thing when we come back, and then I'm going to move on. Back in a moment. Observer Live. I'm going to spend like a minute on this and move on. Everyone, don't get mad at Tim B. He's new, okay? But here's the deal. I've been tracking these ratings for these shows since 1995, okay? And uh, before that, before there even was a figure four weekly, Dave was tracking these numbers in The Observer before it even meant anything. It was just like, eh, you know, Saturday night this week did a 2.3, whatever. This, we've been doing this forever, okay? Now listen. I'm not saying it's not important to analyze the numbers at all, okay? There's, there's the, the, the big picture, and there's the details, okay? It is, it is interesting to look at quarter hours and go, my God, every time you put Ric Flair on TV in the Monday Night Wars, like th hundreds of thousands of people tune in. Like he's, he, There are certain people you can track and go, man, this guy, you put this guy on TV, it's going to do way better than if the guy is not on television, okay? Same thing today. You know, there's there's little stories in the numbers. Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill is a television ratings draw. You put Jade Cargill on TV and the numbers are going to go up. These things are all important. But in the big picture, it is going to be a slow and steady rise if Dynamite is going to uh, go to 1.5 million, 1.8 million, 2 million. Okay. If Raw is going to uh, eventually be doing 1.2 million viewers regularly, it's going to be a slow and steady decline, okay? There's never going to be a show, like when the Dark Order beat up the Young Bucks, there's never going to be a show where, like, that's it. You, you're going to go from a regular 1.1 million viewers to 700,000, and those people are never... It's never going to happen like that, okay? It's going to be a slow and steady rise, or it's going to be a slow and steady decline, or it's going to be largely steady, and there's going to be ups and downs, okay? That's the big picture. The problem is a lot of people that don't understand the ratings, they can't see this big picture. They only look at... What happened this week? The, the show did 850,000 viewers. Show's dead. They did something last week that people didn't like. They're never going to... That's not going to happen. There are going to be weeks where the lead-in is weak, for example. There are going to be weeks where people really want to watch the debut of South Park. There's And this is going to happen. There's going to be a week where CM Punk is going to face so-and-so or whatever, and the number's going to be high. You know, CM Punk and MGF for free on television didn't do a gigantic number. Does that mean nobody cares about the feud? Does that mean that it's not going to drop? Of course not. It was one week. I don't know why, but over uh whatever the word would be uh fixating on one week it's same thing with raw fixating and on a week's rating fixating Brian when they go to another network you're wasting your time you mentioned I'm right done. there the reason why is because you don't know why and that's the whole thing with the numbers is over time you learn from them because when we started doing this what was the monday night war total amount of viewers that we had in in 2000 and what was it do you remember off the top of your head 
mixed up between off the two what? shows. Off the top of your head, what the total amount of viewers were during five the Monday million. night. Five million total at, at the that end. point. Actually, actually, at the end, because WWE was doing so well, it was still like around nine million. So, so Raw so was there. doing huge numbers, and, and WCW was down to two million viewers. And we've watched that atrophy over time, and we learned as things started to snowball downward as to why those things happened. And that's why a lot of times, the, you know, people that are thinking we're very critical of WWE, no, it's because we've had more data to go off of, and we've seen the decline in booking. We've seen the decline in how they did production, things that they always were sharp with that have declined. And people want to take those things that we have studied about that and apply them to AEW and go, well, you're not doing the same thing. Yes, most people, rational people are. like every. But the problem is there are so many people that just want to make this a war that they really don't benefit from. I mean, I don't see how if you're a wrestling fan, you know, again, why it, why you've got to choose sides and why people have got to be so, you know, the, the word tribal has been thrown out there a lot. But that's what people have done with these numbers. And the reality of these numbers is we, we need to gather them. And yes, like you mentioned, you put them up there and, and yes, it gives you a little bit of a wave off the shore. But there's a whole ocean out there that you have to learn from. And that's when people want to they don't want to do that they don't want to like study numbers and actually see how things work and actually put real thought behind them they just want to make the tweet and that's why most of the times these discussions have gotten so old and long in the tooth that you know even bothering to talk about ratings is ridiculous other than the fact there's so many people that'll hit a youtube view to see it or you know the tweet gets retweeted like the responses that you get on your tweets i mean as ridiculous as it is for you there are some people that just have got to feel the need to do that every single week and you know it sucks to have to shine a light on them but hopefully we don't have to and in fact i don't know how we can transition away from that but new book alert and i know you do it right now i know you usually don't like books let me do it this way you don't usually like books unless you know you're writing them or it's your turn to color in them but i just literally literally just got this in the mail for all the old heads out there and people that like to read Wahoo McDaniel, the new John Cosper book with uh, Wahoo McDaniel's uh, wife, Karen. So there, eatsleepwrestle.com, I think, where you can pick that up. John Cosper does a good job. Black Panther, Jim Mitchell has done some other good historical books. So I can't wait to read that because Wahoo McDaniel was one of your favorite wrestlers, favorite wrestler, guaranteed. Wahoo! Like I said, I don't know how to move on from this discussion. You know how to move on from the discussion? You stop talking about it. I'm done talking Jar- about ratings, geeks. So I just did. Now listen. Jar listen them up. Here. Let's go. All right. We have the main events for WrestleMania night one and two. So if you're not going to both nights of WrestleMania, like I'm not, here's, here's your lineup. By lineup, I mean we got one match for each night. If you want to see Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey as the main event of the show you go to, you need to buy a ticket for night one. That is the main event of April 2nd. It's a WrestleMania show. You understand, Mike? You idiot. We are moving to If you to want the to point. see... Go ahead. No, wait. Go, go, if right, you go ahead, want go to see Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, you must buy a ticket for night two of WrestleMania. That will be April 3rd, Sunday. So there you go. If you want to see both of these, you got to buy a ticket for both shows. That includes you got to get a ticket for parking. You got to get in and out of this giant building with a bunch of other idiots. It's going <laughs> to suck. I'm still furious about this two night gimmick. They can make all the money they want. I, I ain't know. going. I know the real shark jumping point with with all of this stuff with you came back when they started moving pay-per-view times back. And we remember all of the yelling and screaming you did about the West. Yes, it did. That's where historically, when people look back at Brian Alvarez losing his mind over WrestleMania. But I think today is the point where I think I have realized that they are going to continue to do two-night WrestleManias and they're going to be 75 hours long Of course they are. And this is the point where you are going to stop watching all of WrestleMania. At some point, we're going to get no. Brian reviews no. where it's just Dave, and you have it's going to be you talking about you fast-forwarding through like seven matches. I, that's Bro, how listen. it's going to be. It's coming listen, this I'll, way. I'll tell you where the shark got Ten jumped. Ten years the away. Shark, shark got jumped during that, uh, that uh, New York, New Jersey WrestleMania. I think they called it New York WrestleMania, but it was actually New Jersey. But, uh, the, the, I mean, bro... It took me 
forever to get into that stupid building. And then on the way home, and no, Ed, I don't want to hear about if I would have just <laughs> taken your stupid bus, okay? Bro, it took me, I didn't get home till 4 a.m. in the morning out of that WrestleMania. And at that so point, I was like, bro, though. dude, listen, if there's a one night WrestleMania, I'll go, okay? But I ain't doing this two nights in a row. It's not happening. I am sticking to it. I am not going to both nights of WrestleMania this year. At this point, I'm not going to either night of WrestleMania. And you know the funny thing is? They are going to do, uh, do pretty well. They're at 55000 I thought they were going to top out at 55000 but like they're pulling out the Steve Austins and the whole nine yards. So they may, they may do 60000 65000 or whatever, okay? But uh, when I was angry about this, I said, listen... I'm one guy, okay? I'm one guy. I'm not saying that nobody is going to go to WrestleMania. I'm not saying everybody is like me. I'm just a dude who has made a decision, okay? But you know what's funny about this? What's that? We used to do this WrestleMania thing every year, and it was more than just me. We had like a whole group of people that used to go to WrestleMania every year. I can't find any of those people that are going this year. So apparently I'm not the only one who doesn't want to deal with getting in and out of this damn stadium two nights in a row. And by the way, by the way, people are like, oh, well, you know, what would you prefer? Uh, one six-hour WrestleMania or two three-hour WrestleManias? And it's like, oh, well, you know, two three-hour WrestleManias is much easier. Than Bro, you think this, this first night of WrestleMania is going to be three hours? You think night two of WrestleMania is going to be three hours? If that's the case, have I got a cameo to sell to you it ain't gonna be three hours on night one and three hours on night two are you out of your mind Maybe. it's a great story it's a great thing to say oh hey you're complaining about it but trust me three hours for one night's gonna be better bro that ain't gonna be three hours you're telling me that they're gonna sell tickets for people to show up at wrestlemania and they're gonna give them a three-hour show bro the video packages alone are gonna be three hours you're gonna be in that building for six hours you're going to have to get in, get out, and do the, Brian, whole, the whole thing the next day. Listen to yourself. Not did doing you it. Did you ever think, did you ever think that people just have stopped wanting to hang out with your ass because the way you bitch and whine and I moan, didn't hang out with him anyway when we went. Party? I can see why. Man. I'm trying to sell a QA. Are you going to Mania? No. Of course not. Can't afford that mess. Are you crazy? If I did, I'd just go to the collective stuff anyway, you know. So I am. You know we got SmackDown tonight? Yeah, I don't care. You know what they're doing on this show? Don't care. I'll tell you. After the break, Wrestling Observer Live. I can always tell who's never actually gone to a WrestleMania. Oh, God. Here we go. Yeah, this guy here. Mm -hmm. Dude watches 8,000 hours of wrestling a week and is bothered by walking into a building. That's a man who's never gone to a WrestleMania. <laughs> but you know what he also is? He's a man who's going to get on the keyboard and he's going to go, I've been to the last nine WrestleManias. Maybe All he All right, has. buddy. Maybe tell me has. more about your girlfriend in Canada while you're at it. Oh, well, now, listen to this. She goes to the other school. Smackdown. Is that what you're saying? Before you exactly. say anything else, by the way, maybe it's just we're getting old. You're getting old. And not in a bad way. It's just that this is the evolution of things. I look at festivals over two and three days. I look at what WWE wants to accomplish corporately and financially, how it benefits the city, why you do things in the way that you do them. And you can say, this blows, it sucks. That's just how it goes. We don't have wrestling shows on Christmas night anymore and Thanksgiving night anymore. I mean, things... Times change, traditions in wrestling change, and it may just be a matter of, well, you know, if you like that and can handle it and and have the money to spend on all that stuff, which has always been one of the limiting things for me. I've had a family. I've had a job that at times I couldn't actually leave. Like you'd have the UFC convention when the, the site first started. I couldn't get away in July to go to those things. I would have loved to have gone to those things. I just couldn't do it. And then I had my son. There's financials. And, and there's just so many things that as you get older and as you change, I mean, it's almost impossible. So they become iPay-Per-View events and they become streaming events. And that's where the value is that way. So this is unfortunately time for a lot of us who liked it the older way because it was so much easier. It's just not the way it's going to be anymore. It's not about easier. It's about convenience. 
At the end of May, I'm going, to, I'm going to double or nothing, brother. Fool. I'm going to double or nothing, and I'm going to work my way into that building, and I'm going to work my way out of that Brian, building, and we're going to do a Q and A there. Listen to me. Listen to and me. And I'm going to have the time of my life. And if you no, don't think that Tony Khan, listen to me, homie. If you don't think that they could turn that into a two day thing, if if they found out they could, if they found out cities would kind of bid for this stuff because we need stuff coming in and he could pull it off. Don't you think they would? Of course they would. And it's doing it one time. Well, would be awesome. when they do doing it more than one time because it was successful, then it's not as awesome anymore. When, and that's when, when you AW, pick and choose. When AW does a two night double or nothing that's six hours each night, then I'm not going to go. But, but until but then just, <laughs> Until but then, for the same reasons I'm going why. To go. For the same reasons why, but that's any other wrestling show. It's any other wrestling show besides WrestleMania. What other one runs two days like that at that level? Nobody now, except for New Japan, which I was is another say, what level. Are you talking about New that's Japan another, runs but, two nights of the Tokyo. But exactly. Dome. But there's another Not going level there of, either. But there's another level of insanity there that is already blowing up in their face. But. That's a story for another day. Look, yeah, it it doesn't work for them at all. It does work for WWE and the cities that they want to run and move this thing around. I just times have changed, and that's it's simply that's the way it is. Well, they can have fun. I'll be I'll be elsewhere tonight mm-hmm. on SmackDown. Everybody, tonight on SmackDown, you're not going to believe this. There is a contract signing. Ugh. I don't even know who, but anyway, there is one Ronda. tonight. And uh, we also got Drew McIntyre and Madcap Moss taking place tonight after Madcap Moss almost got killed last week. <laughs> How many times fine, are you so going to replay that one? Sami Zayn uh, celebrates his championship win. And uh, the contract signing, by the way, you idiot, is Roman Reigns and Lesnar. Who cares? Not Ronda Rousey. And she- you think they're going to do another contract signing after that one they, that thing they did last no, week? No. Where Whatever. Charlotte couldn't even get her head slammed into a table? <laughs> that was two weeks ago, I think, wasn't it? Mm. Everything's all off. Hawaiian time is different. I'm How about that radio silence? Chat. That's what radio silence is, everybody. It is radio silence because you know what? It's okay to be silent. You don't have to talk all the time. Mm. <laughs> Mike is right. This person says Coachella used to. Be oh, that's what this is about. Okay. Who here we in go. God's name is arguing that you can't? I don't care if WrestleMania. Dude, you want to run WrestleMania seven straight nights? Knock yourselves out. I'm just not going to go. I'm not a bad guy for it. I, know, I got better is, things to do than sit in the stadium is, for six hours. This watching, is listen, morphing into you listen. not watching WrestleMania on both nights for the entire night. At some point, that's going to come. No, that's I am going to watch both Because you're going to say no, the same not. thing. It's I don't need job. to watch these geeks. No, or, uh, mm-hmm. no Mike, that's you. Your job You're the one no, that goes, bull. I'm not going to watch second. NXT 2.0. Wait a second. I'm I watch one, it. I, I have great joy during WrestleMania. I don't know if you've ever seen my tweets during WrestleMania. I always have a blast. WrestleMania, I don't even put it in my mind as a anything serious anymore. It's a one-night event. It's a party. That's what it should be. So for me, it's still a party. You are like, here, old man, where it's just like, man, I got to deal with the kids, and I had to do this, and nobody wants to come over. It's 88 hours long. So I said, you know what? I'm not watching any of that because the main event and the things i want to see are going to come later on anyway or it's going to be a story about you fast forward dvring things do you this actually is going to listen come. to anything that i say or do you just have to yell about stuff on the radio bro nope. i don't go have full, any problem full brian entertainment i mode have one day. no problem sitting in my house and watching wrestlemania over two nights zero <laughs> all i'm saying now, is i ain't going now you don't it's no. coming Bro, uh, of the two of us, there, there's nope. one of us here that has no Mark problem stay, watching people. NXT 2.0 every week because it's my job. There's another it's one of us. Cr- oh, I'm not going to watch it. It's not my job to watch NXT 2.0. It is not my job to watch NXT 2.0. Yeah, you're right. Can you it's point not your out job anywhere? to watch a, a show that uh, when you're doing a national radio show. Let's First not watch all, NXT 2.0 on that, USA. When you're not here, nobody wants to hear. When you're not here, nobody asks you me about know NXT what nobody 2.0. In fact, they go out of the way to say, don't review it. And I still review it and watch it. Yeah, so I am there, doing my yeah, job. Why don't, you, why don't you go check out the uh, the hey, views hey, for NXT hey, 2.0 reviews hey, Bri- on hey, YouTube. Hey, Cruise Guy, then did you ever watch that last to watch Ray Saray match? 
you ever watch that? Did you ever catch Lash back LaRue up on the things? Lash LaRue and Saray? Not Lash LaRue. No, I've not LaRue. seen Lash LaRue and Saray, Mike. <laughs> Lash legend. Lash Tell me legend more about these, these matches nobody wants to see. Well, what about all those matches you didn't watch while you were on vacation the last time? And on your cruise, you didn't catch back up. It wasn't so important. Listen at you, Mr. Mr. Journalist, Mr. TV reviewer. You didn't even Actually, go back, back and watch and the things a lot that you missed. Things. Oh, yeah, I'm Not sure. Not everything. I bet you because did. Because, in fact, the wrestling world keeps turning, and i got to watch all of his other stuff. So mm-hmm. Now, let's look at this feedback Did you? Here okay, from here, I got a question for listeners. you. I have a question for you. Did you watch either of the GCW shows from this past weekend? Did you watch Prestige from this last weekend? Did you watch New Japan Strong or the two New Japan shows from this past weekend? Did you watch Stardom? Did you watch any of those things? Mr. Alvarez, did you watch the Jersey Championship Wrestling Show? House of Hardcore? Terminus last night? What in God's name are you talking about? Well, if you're, you're by the way, everybody on Monday will be reviewing all of the news and things you have on the to uh, Filthy Tom Lawler show. If you'd like to uh, hear about Stardom in New Japan Strong, Mister Mister News here, WrestleMania 11, you're on. Will Which the MSG it? show be on the Peacock Network? My apologize for being a jerk on Twitch. Thanks for unblocking me. <laughs> well, I didn't unblock you. I don't know how you got through. But the point of He's this is trying to block me at right this now. point. The MSG show will not be on Peacock or the network. Uh, but that could change. And they went out of their way, by the way, to note that uh, uh, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley's not taking place in MSG. <laughs> they've known this whole time that they've been promoting it. But at least they've told us in advance now not to buy your tickets to see that match because you ain't going to see it. <laughs> this person here says, uh, Brian, are you Mexican? <laughs> yes. I am half Where Mexican. Are the, what, do, all Thank of a sudden, you. do we get new people who just That's fell a question for the... Cameo. What, are you going to discuss your lineage? Brian, while you were in Hawaii, have you been able to meet up with your favorite Honolulu caller, Brian? Well, my friend, you know, I was watching this Raw Raw show the other night, Mm -hmm. and uh, there was a match with um, uh, Von Kruis. You ever heard of that guy? The former (laughs) uh, Skull Von Crush? No. Von Kruis, they called him. And uh, he was wrestling the Native American Tatanka. And, uh, and they announced that Von Kruis was from, and I quote, Germany. Where? I don't know where. They just said he was in Germany. Well, my friend, I'm in Hawaii, but I'm not anywhere near Honolulu. In order to meet up with my friend from Honolulu, I'd have to get on an airplane and or a boat. Actually, it would be or, not and or. But the point of this is, no, I have not met up with a guy on another island on my trip to this island. All this wrestling news spinning in this world, and this guy's watching Skull Von Crush from Germany. Parts unknown Germany. Yeah, because you know what? It's entertaining. It's fun. And listen to that show. (laughs) Brian, the MJF promo last night was genius. Growing up around a narcissist who would be an out-and-out horrible person at every turn... And then have a moment where you would doubt for a single second because they were playing everything they have ever done on being treated wrong. And then go back to who they were, which is where I think that this is going. This is all genius. Definitely real. I also just want to add, this reminds me of the John Jones tweet saying, Everyone can cheer up because I'm sad now. <laughs> he needs to get some help. He did? Well, yeah. That's uh, pro- probably. Uh, here's the thing. that's the, the only thing about the genius aspect of this, it's only genius because we have gotten so far away from this in pro wrestling and some of it by circumstance. I mean, we just can't go as long. People do not pay attention to storylines as long. They've been bastardized so much from WWE that it's it's difficult to, in the same way that other promotions, indie promotions and foreign promotions can get away with it. This is just great layered story. This is the way it should be with every main event angle, not only at every main event angle, but every angle that's supposed to matter. Your semi-mains, things that may tie in to other people who are in the main event now, they need to be in serious things and with layers to them as well. And I I hope we see more of this because I think, again, I, MJF is fantastic. How they're playing this, playing into reality right now. I mean, with, with Dax Harwood coming out and things like that for MJF to 
take this on and we're getting another layer, you know, in his backstory, as well as him using this as ammunition to probably just tell people how whiny they are and how great he is and how much of an idiot punk is, because you see him luring punk into his trap right now with how he walked out of there and punk the look on punk's face after punk wanted to kill him, literally murder this guy only weeks earlier. I mean, damn it, this is the way it should be all the time. You talk about this with MJF, why he's so good and how he's so much better than everybody else. Everybody wouldn't prove if we had this mentality when it came to this sort of stuff. Wrestling. This person here says, you have been analyzing ratings since I was a sperm. Thank well, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. A lot of cases. Is it possible the teases of a huge announcement is the reason the viewership bounced back? No, it is not. Mm. Because uh, this has been... Uh, I don't think anybody was expecting any announcement this coming Wednesday. He didn't announce that there was going to be an announcement this Wednesday. So if there was a huge bounce as a result of the announcement of an announcement, that would be this coming Wednesday. So you can track that if you'd like to. <laughs> this person here says, Brian, there's someone in AEW's audience with a bag or box over their head. I can't tell the Good. difference. Is it a bag or a box? It's a box. They're always there in every city, even on dark. It may just be a fan. It ain't dark But if this you. is part of the show and a surprise is coming from it, please don't spoil it. I just oh. want to say that I love that AEW has little things like that for those paying attention. Well, it's hard for me to spoil it if I have no idea who has a bag or a box on their head. Yes, you and do. And no one's going to tell me. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah, I'll tell you. Who is it? it I can't. Well, you know? You want to be, yes, I'll tell, tell me you during the right. break. Yes. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Yes, I knew who the bad guy was. Mike can confirm. Yes. What I did not know was mm -hmm. that I was supposed to care so much. Well, That's what's news to me. Well, here's when the I went thing. on the, uh, the chat here. Depending on Don't who reveal you... it well, for this I, poor I, texter. I won't. I just, depending on who this texter follows on Twitter, they obviously don't follow this person who has tweeted about it with reference to themselves, I believe. so. I did, uh, I did think it was funny. I was on the... Uh, I was on the uh, chat here, and, and someone goes, uh, okay, here it is. I Which won't say chat? the guy's name. I won't say the guy's name. This guy goes, I wasn't a fan of his, but I'm interested to know what this is all about. <laughs> he has a bag on his head. <laughs> well. What? What? It's a box. I mean, you know, you know, you had a great audience when, like, they're intrigued because you have a bag on your head. Well. Oh, man, where could this be going? <laughs> He's wearing a Bag on his head. Golly. Think of all the possibilities. Maybe his nose fell off. Maybe he grew a third eye. But maybe. That's all I could think of. Maybe his, his, maybe his, he's a bandit. Hadn't thought of that one. Mama worked at a grocery store. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Well, hey. Intrigue. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Maybe he's, maybe he's, uh, uh, what was that guy's name in Kaiju Big Battle? Doctor, what's his name? Dr. Q, a box it's not head? Dr. Cube. Doc, not yeah, Dr. maybe he's Cube. Dr. Cube. I hadn't thought no, of that. Oh, no. Anyway, we're out of time. I had a great time doing Observer Live from Hawaii, everybody. But now it's back to real life here on Sunday. Andrew's going to be here Sunday. I'll, uh, I'll be back Monday. And, uh, later on this weekend with Dave. And, uh, that's it. So, thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.